Oh, what's going on my trainer club my favorite videos are the excellent throw tutorials that I do so I have not done this but I'm going to do it for all of the beginner notice alerts how to throw your curveballs in Pokemon Go to master that throw so you can catch more you can get more XP and you can have higher catch rates when you are catching Pokemon so welcome to the trainer club guys here we go So the excellent throw, one of the most important, in my opinion, things to the game as far as catching goes because not only do you get increased chances, but you also get more XP every time you catch. And to add on to that, the curveball not only does that increase your chances, but it also gets you more XP at the same time. So the more we can stack and add up, the more that we can do. So I want to know right now from you guys, do you have the curveball mastered right now? And so we really want to master how to throw that curveball for all of the beginners out there, for all the people that have been playing out there, and for everybody else that does not quite have it down, I am here to help you. So before we get into the mastering the curveball, I really want to make sure to tell you this important detail and it is going to help you make sure to get those curveball down and the key here is that I learned when I first started because it's very frustrating and intimidating at first when you've never done it is to just not look back do not have an option that hey I can go back to throwing regular balls the option of that in the back of your head, the second you get frustrated without hitting these curveballs or without doing them properly, you're going to instantly revert. Everybody that has the curveballs has made a dedication and a standpoint in their mind that we are only throwing curveballs from now on. So I only have one option and that is to master this. So get into that mindset if you don't have it already mastered. It's only because you've done it you haven't really perfected it, got that muscle memory down, no different than throwing a straight ball, then you're going to want to keep and hold onto that to make sure to master this. So each of these steps, I'm going to break down up close so that you can see my screen, see my finger, look at what I'm doing so it's going to make more sense to you. Because my goal here is that you can watch this video, maybe a couple times if you need to, take it straight to the streets and start throwing those curveballs. And then after that, we're gonna go into how to throw the excellent curveballs after that. So let's break it down, my top five simple tips to make sure to learn how to master throwing curveballs in Pokemon Go. And the first one is going to be very simple, very easy, is just to get down, picking up that ball off the top of the dock and spinning it in a circle because this is the starting point that you're going to do. Once you start doing that, you're gonna notice that the ball starts to have stars or sparks or whatever you wanna call it coming out of it. And the ball's spinning in a circle. This is how you start. So you can either go right or you can go left. Either one is effective, either one works. Doesn't matter what finger you throw with at all. It's all going to work because it's tailored specifically to you. The first step is just going to be spinning the ball. Spinning the ball is really how you get the momentum to be able to throw the curve ball. So as all you're gonna do is pick the ball up from the dock. You can spin it counterclockwise or you can also spin it clockwise, which is gonna to be to the left. So either one works, this is how you get comfortable, this is how you start getting ready to master the curveball. What I am sharing is how I do it. That doesn't mean that it has to be the same. The angle for you that you throw the curveball can be different as long as you get it to where you feel comfortable and where you perfect it. So after we have that curveball picked up, the next thing that we are going to do is going to be my step number two, which is going to be figure out your angle of what you like to throw best. So for me, when I throw, I'm here and I throw at about a 90 degree angle. See how it comes up, it hits about 90 degrees. If we're blocking the corner, I'm here, boom, and I throw it and it hits that axis point. So the 90 degrees is where I let it go. Step number two is fairly simple and straightforward, it is really just getting down the feeling of where you're going to be releasing the ball. Depending on where the Pokemon is, is gonna be a differential in where you actually release the point. So for the Jinx, it's a little further back of a Pokemon, so we are going to be looking at throwing it a little bit faster and a little bit higher than normal, which we'll break down in a second. But if you look at this in slow motion, this is really what you're doing. You're getting the curveball spinning, you spin it a couple times, and then you throw it up into the corner. So it's a round and up. You can even just do one whole big round and then go up. But the key is doing the circle and then getting it up into the corner, ready to throw. And if you're going lefty, you can do that too. But some people like to go a little bit higher 
right? So it's really just getting Pokemon, go out there and figure out what angle is the best for you to release your Pokemon at. That angle is going to be basically the same, which is gonna translate into our step number three, and that's gonna be speed. How fast you are going to throw the curveball is going to matter because some Pokemon are close, some Pokemon are medium, some Pokemon are far. So take for Snorlax, for example, dude is very far on the screen. So you really have to spin, 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 and then speed up as you throw it. That's why the tip number three is speed. What speed are you throwing it at? And then take like a Pidgey or a Weedle. They're so close, you barely have to do anything and you just have to kind of flick the ball with your finger because that is gonna be a very slow speed. So if you keep managing the speed, you're going to be able to get down everything and this is gonna translate into all Pokemon. This is how we throw against all of the different raid bosses because as long as you know what speed you have to do and you memorize that speed, that's why my excellent throw tutorials for all of the raid bosses, once you get that muscle memory down, you can almost do it with your eyes closed, which I have done in the past with some of my raid bosses that I've caught blindfolded because I've thrown that ball so many times. Imagine you get 10 balls and you do 20 raids, right? That's 200 balls that I could potentially throw if I go through all of them. And after doing that muscle memory, it really starts to get down. So the speed number three, make sure to master that speed. Tip number three comes down to speed. Speed is really just how far is the Pokemon on the screen. So if you're gonna notice here, I'm gonna break down a couple different ones. Delibird's speed is relatively medium. He's about a medium width Pokemon from where you're at in the screen. Snowrunt, on the other hand, is just a tad bit more close. So if you notice here, my circle is gonna be a little bit more tight. I don't go quite to the corner of the screen because I don't need to because Snowrunt is closer. So the third Pokemon that we're gonna look at is Jinx. So let's check this out again. We're gonna see the Delibird, we're gonna see the Snowrunt, and then we're gonna see the Jinx. So we're gonna start breaking this down in slow motion. I want you to check out the differential of the throw here. Do you see that one? It's relatively medium of a throw speed, okay? I know it's in slow motion, but if you need to rewatch this part, do it a couple times. Here's the snow run. The snow run is a closer one. Look at how much closer my finger goes to the center. It doesn't go quite far as out as the Jinx or the Deli Bird will, but that one stays a little bit more in the center. And then check out the Jinx. The Jinx is a little bit further, so watch how far my finger goes out to the corner, almost hits the side of the screen, and then curves right into the Jinx to hit that. So watch that part a couple times to get that down. And then on to my number four is going to be where to release the ball on the screen. Because when you're throwing it like this, let's say you go all the way to the top of the screen and you don't release the ball, it's still gonna be spinning attached to your finger. So at some point when you go here, you get the angle right, you have the speed right, you need to pull your finger off the screen or let your finger off the screen so that the ball goes. So it's basically spin, 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 roll, and then let that go. For this one, we are looking at the Deli Bird first. So notice how I got the spin going down and here is my release point. We're gonna break this down quite in depth here. The release point is relatively in the middle of the right quadrant of the screen and I am throwing counterclockwise with my right hand. The snow run, on the other hand, is gonna be a little bit closer as we mentioned, so check out this release point. Much, much different and much, much closer than the other one. So just take that into account and then check out here. So the bottom left one obviously with the ball is the snow run and then the other one is the deli bird. Look at the difference there. So then we're also now gonna go on to the Jinx. So here's the Jinx release point. The Jinx release point, as I mentioned earlier, is much more up in the corner. Look, it's almost off the screen. That's the Deli Bird, right? So you see that a little bit more inward. And then after we go inward, now we're gonna go even more inward for the snow run. So look at the differentials between those two and that really has to do with speed and how much speed you want the ball to get where you release it. So we're gonna keep going here. We're gonna check this out again. Here's the Deli Bird, here's the snow run, and then here is the Jinx. So look at those, watch this a couple more times. Here's slow motion one more time. Check out the Deli Bird, boom, there's the release point. Right, you see that hits right an excellent throw. Like I said, you can do this many different ways, but this is how I've learned to do it, and this is where mine is. So, if you want to copy me, you can, if not, then make your own. But this is the snow run, so notice how much closer the snow run is. And then finally, the jinx. I love these three combinations because we have the close, we have the medium, and then we have the further. And then the jinx is the furthest. Look at that hitbox off the corner of the screen. That's why the iPhone X's at first were giving us some troubles. And then after you do that, you basically just want to release that every single time in the exact same place, in the exact same position, 
if it's the same Pokemon. If it's not, you're gonna have to know and start getting used to where they're at. I'm sure you already do know where they're at because you've been playing, you've been throwing straight balls. You're going to know where they're at. So just do that exact same release point, just coming from a different way and a different speed and a different angle. And I know that's why this can get overwhelming for some of you guys that don't have the curveball mastered yet. And this is the reason why, because you just have to commit, you cut everything else off and you do. And the final step, which is very easy for you guys to do, is repeat, repeat, repeat. Continue to do curveballs. Let's say take an hour and say, I'm only throwing curveballs for this hour. Go out, start throwing curveballs. That's all you have to do. Spin it in a circle, find your angle, find your release point, and then find your speed, and then release that ball, and then repeat, and keep doing that over and over and over and over again. And by the end of the day, you will be comfortable throwing curveballs. You won't have to be throwing straight balls anymore. Take this time to learn how to do it right now because it's only gonna improve your catchability, how much XP you get, and everything that you need to make sure to master this game to the next level. Now that you have my top five tips, you're gonna wanna look at how to throw the ball when the Pokemon is attacking. If you've seen any of my excellent throw tutorials, you know that the Pokemon attacks and when the Pokemon attacks, it actually freezes where the circle is on your screen. So what I would start and suggest to do is to start throwing just nice curveball throws, meaning the circle's nice and big and you can throw it from there. The next, I would then start shrinking the circle a little bit to the great throw. Start with a big great, work to a small great, but every time you're doing this, still aim for the center because if you can get yourself into the center of a great throw, an excellent throw is just the same thing, except the circle that is around you changes, but the circle that you're hitting directly on its nose or in the center of the Pokemon does not change. So when you throw into the center of the Pokemon, that is gonna be the excellent throw is all you have to do is shrink down that circle. So if we're going to wait for the attack, is all you have to do is hold down on the ball on the bottom. The screen is going to then go up and down, right? until the Pokemon attacks. And if you've noticed, once the Pokemon attacks, and you've watched my videos before, it attacks, the circle freezes for where the attack is. Once he's done with the attack animation, the circle picks up from where it was, which is the key here. So you can hold down that ball, set the circle, let's say, to a great throw, big great throw. This is where I wanna practice. Wait for the Pokemon to attack. Once the Pokemon attacks, you pick the ball up, you do all my steps, you spin, you have your angle down, you have your speed down, you have your release point down, you let it go, and then it's gonna hit your Pokemon right as he finishes the attack, which is then going to allow you to hit the Pokemon without having it batting all your balls away and wasting balls, wasting time, so that you can get onto the next one. And then there's step number five, which is repeat. So then we're gonna hold the ball down more if you wanna get into the excellent throw, let that go, wait for the Pokemon to attack. Jinx is gonna be our test dummy. So we go ahead and we hold down on the ball to set the circle. As soon as he attacks, I pick up, spin, and then release in that hitbox that we talked about earlier with that speed, and that's how we do it. So Jinx is attacking. Once he attacks, I pick that ball up. As he's attacking, I'm gonna go ahead and release and then the ball is gonna get right in there. A little bit of a late release on this one, but that's okay because he didn't double attack. So we're gonna watch this one more time to make sure that we have this down, make sure we look and know what's going on. So the attack is coming. I then pick up the ball. Once I pick up the ball, I go ahead and throw it before the attack is over so that I can get the ball in the circle to stay in the exact same place that we set it in, and then the ball can go in there and hit that excellent throw to make sure that we get that curveball excellent throw. Some of the Pokemon that I do suggest using this, it's really gonna depend on where you're at. So Numels are really good for this because they have a nice big circle. You can also use the Sveal. You can also use, I mean, Snorlax if you have them, not very common. You can use Doduo. Really what you wanna do is find the Pokemon that have nice big hitboxes that are medium width away. You don't have to throw really hard, right? You don't have to throw way too close, like the, the Pidgeys and the Weedles and the Caterpies and the Rats, right? Those are a little bit difficult because they're so close together that you really don't get an accurate feel for this curveball. So pick those Pokemon, get after it, stay away from the Pokemon with the really small hitboxes if you're just starting out. If you really wanna start perfecting it, you can start looking at the smaller guys and then that is really gonna know how well you're doing. But even for myself, I've been doing this for a long time, I still have trouble like Execute, like Nidorans, they have very, very small 
small, excellent throws. You really have to throw it perfectly directly in the center to get that excellent throw. I know you guys can do it. Just make sure to watch this video over, share it with anybody that needs to, and make sure to stay consistent, persistent, and don't give up, and be committed in your mind, and do not look back to throwing a straight ball because you can master that curveball. So thank you for tuning in, guys. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions about this topic, and I am happy to answer those for you. Peace.